Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Hearts of Iron 4 Black Eyes with me, Alpha Paramega and Japan or the Empire of Japan as it's correctly called. So, in the last episode we finished our first technologies. Uh, we finished the electrical, mechanical engineering and the light artillery. Um, we got the type for the 875mm field gun. Today we're gonna finish a couple more technologies, the basic machine tools giving us a decent 4% boost to our production efficiency gap, which I believe translates into a 20% boost in production overall. Uh, kind of hard to believe, but if my math is mathing, that's what we're getting. We're probably also going to finish the separate fire mains and the small caliber semi-armor piercing shell. But I wanted to start this episode by actually looking at our logistics and what equipment we have so that we can check um, and create a bit of a plan on what we want. So we know we have a lot of machine guns and mortars, but that's, you know, not that much of a weird thing. Um, what's it? really good is that we have a lot of armored cars and I believe we have a lot of tank cats. Yeah, we get 329 tank cats, we get 69 medium tanks too, and the armored cars. Okay, so my goal was to increase uh, the third mobile army's power. We definitely want at least one more motorized uh, unit here, or semi-motorized as we have it right now. Uh, but if we could get two more and one more tank division, that would be pretty good. Or, well, the tank division is actually a combined arms division. It's we have another tank division. It's using medium tanks. 80 of them. So if I put you up for production right now, you would be missing about 10 medium tanks. Who is using light tanks? I don't think anyone is apart from uh, you. No, you're using tankettes. So all of the light tanks that we have here, the 57 type 95s, and the production of them that we have running is just going to stockpile. I'm missing fine loads. Okay, we'll deal with that. So if I actually added a white tank in here, that would be, what, 40? Yeah, 40 white tank. Uh, I could switch you to tank at recon. Or actually, that lowers, yeah, that lowers the reconnaissance. So if I gave you the white tank here and switch to you to motorized, what would be the difference? Wait. I did that wrong, motorized and motorized. So that would actually be a huge difference. And then we could add the heavy artillery on the U. And I might even want to put more medium artillery. It's 20. And if we switch to like this, and maybe even the white tanks. 22.5. Yeah, the unit would perform way better. The speed is abysmal, but that's because we uh, don't have the motorized engineers there. It's 55. And what else could we give you? Not much, to be honest. Okay, but this is looking much, much better. The motorized headquarters would also make yeah, extra initiative, your capacity and organization is actually a really good one for you. Yeah, break for 75 is more than many units have regular defense. Uh, okay, so that's something that we want. We we'll also want to change you. And I was wondering if we wanted to give you guys tankettes instead of the cavalry. How much would we need? 25 per unit, which is 575, so we would need only like 200. And the difference if we gave the tankette is pretty good. The breakthrough of 2.1 is actually 10% boost. Reconnaissance also goes up significantly. Strength and armor and piercing, and that's if we don't upgrade the tankettes themselves. 
So for regular infantry, having that and the heavy artillery might be good. What's your fuel consumption now? Do you have any? It's uh, a question. Yeah, fuel is at point thirty-six, and this would be oh wow, that is a big difference. Hmm, what about the armored cars? No, that's even worse, actually. Okay, so tankets gonna go to the infantry unit. And we're gonna switch also the artillery, as you mentioned, and give it the heavy artillery. And we checked what we want to do with you guys. And we checked what we want to do with you guys. So that actually is pretty good. So at this point, what I need to do is do it like this. And you. So that's gonna be our primary recruitment we'll have you deployed in Nagoya wait uh, on both of you so that's gonna boost the uh, mobile army to three combined units and to three semi-motorized and I think we could also start uh, with the recruitment of infantry so we need more infantry guns, mountain artillery, horse transport, slight artillery, support equipment, recon equipment, transport trucks, yeah. Well, this should pretty quickly give us an idea of what we're missing here. And where our issues are. So horse transports, that's a definite uh, white artillery and mountain artillery. Mount I'm gonna ignore the mountain artillery for now because we want to substitute it for white artillery for these units. Infantry guns, okay, fair enough. Transport trucks, white vehicles, support equipment and recon, and medium tanks. Okay, and white tanks are coming here. And we need to decide what we're gonna do. Oh wait, you guys are separated now. Because you were in the border conflict. So you're supposed to be... Uh, part of... Uh, this? Wait, how did you... Uh, what's this one doing here? Oh, I guess you were just the drag into that. What the hell are the reserves? Ah, uh, wait, what? Oh, here they are. Okay, gotcha. So let me just send you back to the reserves. And the reserves are gonna be located in Japan. I don't really want them. Anywhere outside of Japan at this point. And you are fine and you are supposed to be joined together and a part of this. And why did you guys have... I think you're supposed to get General Umezu Yoshiro, don't you? Uh, that would make sense, I guess, but why was he added to you? Attack, political connected, cautious. Now, you were supposed to guide the Imperial Reserves, and here we were supposed to have the Cavalry Commander, which is you, Otozoya Madda. Okay, so. That's a mistake, you're gonna be reassigned here, and this unit is supposed to have someone else. Okay, so let's give them the best general we can find. You want a skill for? Nope. So let's give Reckless Samurai Lineage. Okay, Samurai, samurai Lineage. Offensive. Wonder Supply. Okay, this guy. Seishere Itakagi. Was it Itakagi? Yeah, Itagaki. Itagaki. Good, good, good. We have a decent amount of command power now, though, so maybe we could look at this. I don't think you guys can get. We have an offensive doctrine. Aggressive assaulter. I'm a breakthrough. 
Yeah, uh, that's not something that we're gonna benefit from now. Nor here. Nor here. So what about your commander? Organization first, initiative, and recover. Okay, let's give you the recover rate and organization first. That's a decent start. And for you guys, the same thing. Division recovery is the best starting trait. And then we're gonna give you the organization first, because you need that in the combat. Okay, and we got 52 political power now, so we can definitely do... Okay, hold on. Prioritize... Steel for guns... Anything else that we could have gotten? Additional consumer goods values. Increases stability. In exchange for 4%. Uh, we'll stay away from that for now. Let's prioritize the steel for guns at this point. Which is going to give us extra factories. And we can look at what we need to get. So, uh, if you look... And horse transports, that's a definite yes. Uh, definite uh, white artillery, also definitely. Mountain, we're gonna ignore infantry guns. Okay, and transport trucks, yeah. White vehicles, oh wow. Support equipment and recon. And medium tanks, okay. So we have 12 extra factories. Let's put... Um, what were we saying? Let's put two more on infantry guns, four more on white artillery, four more on horse transports. Okay, that doesn't really leave much for the transport trucks though. <laughs> so that's gonna be the next priority. I'll put one on medium tanks and three more on the transport trucks. And I think that we can steal from me here, I don't think so. Uh, nope, nothing. Okay, let's keep it as it is. We'll get more factories and they're all gonna go to transport trucks and then to... Uh, to the have Actually, I don't think they have anything, so let's put them on tankettes. Three on tankettes, two on you, and one on you, like so. And we don't have resources. We're missing steel. Really? Okay, uh, but we can convert more steel from the iron we're importing. Italy is a really unreliable partner, but we don't need it to be that reliable at this point, and we need more rubber. Ah, uh, that's, that's not worth it for one. I'm just gonna get the penalty and how high. Is it gonna be the cars? Yeah, you're just using steel. Yeah, it's the Yosuka carrier bomber. Ah, uh, 4.5% will we'll take that. That's not... And a bit of steel. Still, really? Dang it. Well, can we get more steel mills? They cost 4,400. Which is about half of the civilian factor. Are we gonna get any steel mills down the line? Steel mill. Nippon steel. Oh yeah, that one we're gonna get eventually, so no need to deal with that now. Four steel mills, that's like 40 extra steel production. So that's good. That is good. Okay, sort of working. <laughs> Not great, but but sort of working. Okay, let me check the efficiency. On. Yeah, we're gonna get the technology soon, so that's gonna boost our production as well. Oh hey! The special forces went up now. Nice, so I guess it had to just... Uh, I didn't even notice when that happened. Okay, so good. So we could actually even field more 
marines now. That's great news. Okay, so the uh, semi... what was it? The small caliber semi armor piercing shell is done. So now we can get the small caliber armor piercing shell. White attack and white piercing for escorts, torpedo boats and destroyers is increased by 5% and for everyone else... actually no, for cruisers uh, it's 2% and for battleships and carriers it's free. A proper armor piercing shell for small caliber guns gives destroyers and other white ships a fighting chance against armor opponents. Gotcha. The heat wave of 1946. The summer heat wave was one of the most severe heat waves in the modern history of North America. It took place in the middle of the Great Depression and Dust Bowl of the 1930s and caused catastrophic human suffering and an enormous economic toll. The death toll exceeded 5,000 people a huge, and a huge number of crops were destroyed by the heat and lack of moisture. Many states and cities record high temperatures set during this heat wave stood until the summer 2012 North American heat wave. The 1946 heat wave followed one of the coldest winters on record. Well, okay, steel is getting way worse, so I'll have to start importing it directly. Five is already a pretty big issue, but it's probably coming from the fact that we are uh, constructing new ships. Yeah, we finished three. So we have a U, Shiratsuyu, on the Shiratsuyu class. Okay, I'm definitely going to join the first fleet. Then we have a torpedo boat here. 1,837 kilometers. Okay, I'll put you into the reserve fleet for now. And the submarine, 4,200. So we're definitely going into the blue uh, submarine navy. Yep. Really fast. 20 knots. But your surface detection, some visibility. Hmm, do we have anyone? 16. Got 14. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna join uh, this one sub. To you guys, yeah, to you guys, and we're gonna create a new sub unit here. I we'll have to fix um, their orders and maybe split them eventually into more than one um, blue submarine fleet, but we'll see. Joint industrial policy political power plus 10, and Estonia gets five. Our foreign minister met today with his counterpart from Estonia. Above all, it was a matter of harmonizing industrial policies. Excellent work. It's actually a pretty good thing for us. Iron imports a Dugundo, but that's fine. Okay, expanding the Zaibatsu is going to happen soon. So you guys are working on that. So the horse transports 184 days, that's way more reasonable. 61 days for white artillery. Mountain we know about. Fix 62 days for infantry guns. Transport trucks are the only issue. 5,488 days. White vehicles 833. 196, 169. So we can. We'll need way more recon for the tankets as well. So this one will need more factories, definitely soon too. Yeah, but we're gonna get soon to about one per day in white October, and that's you know, that is a reasonable amount. I feel like. It might be just my feeling, but I think it's pretty reasonable. Okay, so we have political power 50. What can we do now? The additional consumer goods factories. That's the 4% is just awful. But in the end, it would increase our factory output 
and all the consumer goods. Is there anything else? Promises of peace might be better, but yeah, we must not be a warmonger. Wasn't there a... Oh yeah, improve the working conditions. Oh, but that requires less than 80% stability. Uh, but I think we can wait. It's gonna take a couple of weeks, but then we can improve the worker working conditions, and in the meantime, we can actually get an advisor. Couldn't we? Someone good? Yeah, I would like you. I've been eyeing you before. Tsukizo Akinaga. Consumer goods factor is low by 3%, and efficiency retention is higher by 7.5%. That's actually really good. Action, attention, and cap. Oh god, this guy is so much better. 5% efficiency cap. Oh, that's a huge for us. Oh, we could get Hideki Tojo. Are we gonna get that one? Um, where is Tojo? Tojo, Tojo. Um, Tojo, Tojo. Nishina. Oh, he's all the way down here. Yeah, it can be done only after 1st January 1940. Okay, uh, so in the meantime, we can actually get... We could get you. First, anyone who lower consumer goods factories? No. Well, I mean, the five percent for us at this point is like twenty-five percent of our overall production. So that's super important. We have to get that. Communist coup in Bolivia. The Bolivian army has overthrown the liberal government of Jose Luis Teada Sorzano. The country's new president, David Toro and Army Chief Carlos Quintanilla has pledged to better the condition of Bolivian people and have seized the American standard oil holdings. Poor Americans, always a target of uh, enemy strife. And we got three more ships. Okay, another Shiratsuyu uh, destroyer. Those are actually pretty good. So let me just add it to the first fleet as well. Do we have any more Shiratsu anywhere? I don't think so. And we have two torpedo boats, both of Tori class. Very fast, but very limited range. But we'll use those eventually as a um, screen for our... Well, either our domestic fleet or some patrols, I guess. So we got two more military factories and one naval dockyard from the Zaibatsu. And now we can expand the Mitsui Zaibatsu. Uh, let me just check if that is the one that we're supposed to do. Yep. Only 28 days. The Mitsui Zaibatsu is one with ties to the Imperial Japanese Army and former Riken Seiyukai party members in the current ruling party, the Imperial Rule Association. If we help them expand their business, we also help the IJA. So we get extra four military factories, two civilian factories, and two tank assembly plants. Pretty good deal. And the two extra factories that we got went straight up to support and recon, I think. And one went to transport trucks, I think. Right? Um, maybe. Maybe, but, you know. Oh god, look at those factories. Uh, and we're missing so much steel now. Jesus. This is getting a bit ridiculous, to be quite honest. Mm, okay, Italy, well, hook me up. 
we need more steel. That's just how it is. Build more factories and deal with that afterwards. We got oil. Hey, basic machine tools. Yes, baby, yes. Amazing. So that will allow us to grow all of our production. And as we said, uh, you are gonna go up on the quality control and the fluorescent lighting. I think we got two times industrial bonus, right? Yeah, okay. So we can do both this one and then the uh, uh, then the concentrated industry. So quality control, production efficiency growth increased by 5%. A focus on quality control will lead to gains in efficiency in the long run. 70 days. Okay, there's another fight. No, or is it this still the same fight? Oh my god, that is a war, not a border conflict. Guatemala withdraws from the League of Nations. Observers cannot help but notice that the League of Nations has been put under pressure more and more in recent years. After Germany and Japan left the League, the only compensation was the admission of the Soviet Social of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics to the League in 1944. Rather, the League now has to cope with the next blow to its goals, with Guatemala announcing its withdrawal. Additional consumer goods. Exploit, exploit. Right, local supplies. Foreign volunteers, we got 50 manpower. Our ambassador to the Kingdom of Iraq has informed us that he had success, succeeded in establishing contacts with a group that is well disposed towards our cause. So 50 manpower. There might be a time when we'll be happy to get those guys. So separate fire mains, they reduce the chance to receive critical hit by 5% and effects of sustained critical hit more by 5%. And we have uh, interwar subdivision, interwar damage control. And global stance chance to receive critical hit and effect of it are rolled by 5%. By separating the main water lines around the ship, the probability of a hit of a hit rendering the ship completely unable to fight fires is much reduced. So next diesel powered emergency pumps. Again, chance to receive critical hit rolled by 5%, but its effect lowered by 10%, and we get further damage control and advanced subdivision. With heavy pumps, usually dependent on the main engines for power, a single and fairly light hit in the engine room may render the ship unable to stay afloat, which is why we'll have a separate thing for that. Now, one thing that I wanted to check was what we can do with tankettes. You use the 6.55mm uh, coup in Nicaragua. Carlos Alberto Brandes Yarkin has installed uh, has installed as president by National Guard Commander Anastasio Somoza Garcia following a military coup. Okay. But the tankette, 6.5mm type 91. Is there another thing that we could get here once we finish the Hobbitzer? Um, because I'm creating that. Oh, wait, that's not you. Who's. Oh, you're combined with the Air Force. Okay, which one? 7.7 7 millimeter. So there's a bunch of guns here, but I wish I could guess which one of these we can use. And 57 millimeter. I guess this one should be available. We can. Research both of those guns and use them to upgrade our tankettes and uh, units, meaning the light and heavy tank. Okinoshima, you are a mine layer, a pretty darn good one. So let's assign you to the mine laying fleet. And this torpedo boat, Tore class. Damn, you're fast! 28.1 knots, but only 1800 kilometer range. Starting to have a lot of torpedo boats here. 
What about you guys? You can upgrade to the V17. Strength reliability, that's actually pretty good. Might be worth it, and it takes 11 days. Hmm. Uh, what the hell is happening here? Jesus Christ, game. Why do you hate me so? What? What was that? Is that like a minor glitch in the matrix? Or why did you just decide to throw this on me? Okay. Schmelling Chaos Luis. Oh yes, the traditional boxing update. I still wonder why this one's there. Because that's such a random update. The first fight between Joe Luis and Max Schmeling took place on the 19th of June 1936 at the Yankee Stadium in New York, United States. Schmeling had studied Luis's style, and in the days before the fight, he claimed to have found the key to victory. However, many commentators thought that he was just trying to raise interest in the fight. Nevertheless, boxing fans still wanted to see this rising star against the famed former world champion. As rounds went by, Luis suffered various injuries, including one to the eye. Luis remained busy trying to land a punch that would give him a knockout victory, but with eyesight trouble and Schmeling's jab constant in his face, this proved impossible. By round 12, Schmeling was far ahead on the judges' scorecards. Finally, he landed a right to Luis's body, followed by another right hand, this one to the jaw. Luis fell near his own corner and was counted out by Donovan. This was Luis's only knockout to defeat the ring his prime. What a fight. So, we got four extra military factories, two civilian and two tank assembly plans. Did that offset? It did offset the increase. And that probably went all to the transport trucks. Yep, we now have six factories that I'm gonna put two more we also got a boost to the tank cat production, which is needed, and the tank's gonna get it next. But this means less rubber for us, and it means less steel for us, so it'll hook me up. That goes our relatively modest bonus to construction. Uh, well, okay, what can we do? And we finished the Hobbitzer, which is a good place to end it. Uh, with the Hobbitzer done, I think at this point we can just start looking at the Arturi Prime Mover, because that one is going to be important. We're not going to produce much of them, or too many of them, but they'll be needed for our tank and um, semi-motorized divisions. How much do you cost? I see cost 7. Mm, that's not that bad. Watch tractors and tract vehicles for moving very heavy equipment, such as heavy artillery. So once this comes up, uh, we're going to upgrade our heavy artillery production, which is going to be really good. We're currently using this one, the Type 45 240mm Hobbitzer. And this is going to be Type 89 15cm cannon. That's interesting, it has the same ammo as you do. That's also a 15 centimeter. I wonder if that's a mistake. But defense goes up by 0.5, soft attack by 2, breakthrough by 0.5, hard attack by 0 0.05, piercing is the same, icy cost increased by 1.5. But yeah, it's gonna be an upgrade nonetheless. Currently, we're nowhere near maximum efficiency, I think. Yep, we're at 16% out of 24. But if we're producing two uh, heavy artillery per month. Just for your understanding, we need 12 per infantry division to be able to set it. So, so far, nowhere near the numbers that we want. But hey, we're still doing good. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me, and I'll see you in the next episode. It's June 19th for the 6th, and uh, things are looking up for Japan. At least our military strength should be increasing. I haven't really checked. Our current strength is 591. Navy is 375. 
and Air, Air Force is 200, 591. So keep that in mind, and we'll check it from time to time. See you in the next episode.